Good afternoon. Good afternoon. If you believe you can do so safely and responsibly, testifying without your mask would be our preference, unless you're not comfortable and able to do that. I would prefer to leave my mask on. All right, very good. Please proceed. Could you please state and spell your name for us? My name is Megan McMahon. My first name is M-E-G-H-A-N-N. -N. My last name is M-C-M-A-H-O-N. And what do you do for a living? I'm employed by the State Crime Lab in Milwaukee as a trace evidence examiner. And while I talk, if we could have the, uh, the sure. screen on. And I'll have you pull that microphone just up as close as you can to you by the base. It, it slides. What is trace evidence? Um, trace evidence is um, the comparison and identification of um, fibers, glass, fire debris analysis, and it also includes uh, physical fit analysis. Um, tell me a little bit about your educational background and your qualifications to perform this type of work. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Spanish from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I have a Master's of Science in Forensic Science from John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Uh, internally at the crime lab uh, or in your work as a trace evidence technician, what, what types of trainings did you uh, undergo or what, what have you done in, in order to learn this skill set? Um, to perform physical fit analysis, I completed a training program at the laboratory that included readings, uh, hands-on exercises, mock casework, and it culminated in a competency exam. Sure. Um, and how long have you been doing this work? I um, have been doing physical fit analysis for approximately three and a half years. Okay. Right. I'm going to show you a couple things. Let's see if you can identify them. Showing you what's been marked is exhibit number 419. What is that? Um, <clears throat> exhibit 419 is a copy of my statement of qualifications. And is that accurately described, um, your qualifications and educational background? Yes. All right. I'll move 419 into evidence. No objection. It is received. Uh, were you involved in the case uh, involving uh, Mr. Chandler Halderson and the deceased individuals, Krista and Bart Halderson? Yes. Uh, and you wrote numerous reports in this case? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you a, a few of the documents, and the question at the end will be, are these the reports you wrote in this case? So I'm showing you, it's been marked as exhibit number 422, 423, 424, and 425. Are these the reports you wrote in this case? Yes, uh, Exhibit 422 is a copy of a report from August 16th, 2021. Exhibit 423 is a copy of a report that I wrote um, on October 7th, 2021. And Exhibit 424 is a copy, a copy of a report um, that I also wrote on October 7th, 2021. And what is Exhibit number 425, if you could? Exhibit 425 are um, copies of the photographs that are associated with the analyses that I done that I did um, with the reports that I authored for this case. Understood. So I will take these and judge at this time. I will move exhibits 422, 423, 424, 425 in evidence. No objection. They are received. 
And uh, rather than reading those off, a uh, presentation has been put together in order to display some of your, your photographs and your reports um, in this case, correct? Yes. And you've had an opportunity to look at that? Yes. And does that exhibit, is that labeled 421? Does that appear to be uh, that presentation? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. And, and so I'll represent to everyone that 420 is the USB drive containing the report, but I'll move 420 and 421 in evidence. No objection. They are received. Right. So we talked about your education qualifications, and we talked about um, trace evidence testing. You used the term physical fit analysis. Yes. Uh, just a little bit, if you could, tell us how you go about performing a physical fit analysis. And, and if you want to use an example of uh, a stick broken in half, what are you, what are you doing? What are you looking at there? Uh, so with physical fit analysis, what I'm doing is I'm examining um, broken pieces of evidence um, to determine if the broken ends could fit together if the piece of, pieces of evidence were once uh, joined. Um, in layman's terms, it's sort of like a uh, forensic jigsaw puzzle. Okay. Uh, and you performed that analysis and several items related to this case in the State versus Chandler Halverson. Yes. All right. Uh, let's talk about starting with your August 16th, 2021 report. You, in that case, or in this report, you reviewed two separate items. One, a piece of black rope uh, recovered from the Halverson residence, and one uh, piece of rope uh, recovered from the torso of Mr. Halverson. Correct. Okay. Uh, we have some photographs just to demonstrate what you're looking at. Um, this is one of those items. Is this one of oh, those items? Yes, it is. And uh, another photograph detailing uh, perhaps the other one? Correct. Okay. One side's taped. Can you tell us why? Um, the side that was taped was marked non-evidence end, and that um, is just in, to indicate to me as an, as an analyst that it was um, cut by um, the, the submitting agency. So rather than bring you the whole rope, they cut off the segment they want you to look at and take that end? Yes. Okay. Uh, you performed some analysis there. Tell me what your findings were. Um, so I examined both pieces of rope, and when I'm doing a physical fit analysis, what I'm looking for is enough um, detail in the broken ends to be able to see if they could fit together. In this case, um, I was unable to um, perform a physical fit analysis because there wasn't enough detail in the cut ends to determine if the pieces of rope could, could have fit together. Sure. And you took some photographs of that? Uh, the imaging unit took some photographs of it. And that's a separate unit at the department that you work in? Correct. Okay. Um, and is that a photograph of, of those two ends? Yes. Okay. And so while they might visually appear to be the same color and there's a couple different strands there, you're saying in your profession you're not comfortable making uh, any conclusions related to that. I wasn't able to perform physical fit analysis on these items. Okay. Uh, now we're going to look at uh, exhibit number 423, uh, a different report. This one of, of October 7th. You issued a couple reports on October 7th, but this is the first one. Uh, you examined some different items here. Um, here, 
you had some yellow duct tape that was recovered from inside of a garbage bin, I think labeled um, item C uh, by the lab, and there was item C1 and C2 inside of it, but a garbage can, there was some duct tape stuck inside of it? Yes. Okay, and then you had a long piece of yellow duct tape, a medium piece of yellow duct tape, and a short piece of yellow duct tape, um, item CA, C, C2B, and C2C. Where were those items recovered from? Uh, those items were recovered from item C2, which was a tarp. Those were the pieces of yellow duct tape on the tarp? Yes. Okay. And then you had an item called item H. Um, uh, item H is labeled as a, a roll of yellow duct tape. Um, and that was an actual roll of, of duct tape? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm showing you what's been marked in this case is exhibit number 283. Is that that roll of duct tape that you were able to look at? Uh, yes. Okay. And does that have your lab sticker on it? Yes, and my initials are on the seal. Understood. Thank you. So when you had all of these pieces of duct tape, what was your um, thought process or what were you trying to look for there? Um, so what I was looking at was um, general physical characteristics, so the color, the width of the duct tape, and then I was looking at the torn edges of each of the pieces of duct tape as well as the, um, the edge that was attached to the roll to determine if there were any physical fits um, between any of the pieces of duct tape or any of the pieces back to the roll. Okay. And we have some photographs of, of the items. I think the jury has seen this image, um, Exhibit 58, which has uh, already been shown to the jury, but th that's the tarp inside of the garbage can out on Irwin Road. Is that that piece of duct tape that was inside of that garbage bin? Yes. And the next image, is that the tarp laid out with the pieces of duct tape visible on it? Yes. And uh, is, next slide, is that a closer up of one of those pieces? Yes. Same with the next slide, just another closer up? Yes. Okay. You removed those pieces from the tarp? Or someone did? Somebody at the laboratory did. I did not. Were they laid out uh, for you for inspection? Um, they were uh, previously analyzed and sent to me after the uh, previous analyst was done with their analysis. Things like fingerprints had to be done first? Fingerprints would have to be done before physical fit analysis, yes. Okay, so let's look at a couple of these pieces. Um, C1A, one of the pieces, um, that's a photograph taken by the lab? Yes. C2A, another photograph of the other piece? Yes. C2B, just another piece. Correct. C2C, just another piece. Now mm -hmm. let's talk about item, I think it was H. It was a roll of duct tape that you were provided? Yes. Okay. I'm showing with the jury what's been marked as exhibit number 259, image of the roll of duct tape at the Halderson home. Um, go back. All right. The police provided you that and you took some, our photographs were taken of that by the lab. Here and now it's labeled, of course, item H. Yes. Okay. You performed some analysis? Yes. Uh, tell me what you did and what you found. Um, so I looked at the items visually and microscopically. Um, I was able to connect uh, or to determine that physical fits were present between items H, which is the roll of duct tape, Item C2A, which is one of the pieces of duct tape that was on the tarp. Um, I was able to determine that um, item C2A, one of the pieces of the tarp also fit to item C2C, which was found on the tarp. And then item C2C found on the tarp, the other end physically fit to item C1A, which is the piece of duct tape from the um, garbage bin. So while you just said a, a lot of letters and numbers, what that meant was that the roll of duct tape that we saw pictured in the, in the exhibit found at the Halderson home connected in one continuous line with all the pieces of duct tape that were found either in the garbage can or on the tarp that was found uh, in item C. Uh, the roll of duct tape physically fit back to one of the pieces on the tarp, and yes, that, can, that those other pieces also physically fit to each other as well. And thankfully the lab took some photographs of this. Yes. Okay, so there is the fit between C2A and C2C. A C2A and C, um, excuse me, C2C and C1A. Okay. Yes. And then C2A and C2C. 
that one's connected as well? Yes. And you were able to determine that was, in fact, a physical fit? Yes. And then C2A and H, H being the role of duct tape. Yes. And you were able to determine that was a physical fit? Yes. When you determine this, are you looking at it just with the naked eye? Are you looking at it any closer? What are you doing? So um, my first step in examination is to, to visually look at it. Um, again, I'm looking for um, sort of general class characteristics, so the width of the duct tape, the color of the duct tape. Um, then I'll use a, a microscope to examine uh, the evidence a little in a little more detail to look closer at um, the broken edges to determine, again, if, if the broken edges could physically fit back together. And in this case, um, this is what we talked about, that one continuous piece of tape? Yes. And, in, and is it your opinion that item H fits into C2A, which fits into item C2C? Yes. Okay. Talk about another report, exhibit number 424. Um, here you examined uh, a couple of different items, one being a, a broken saw blade and one a bow saw frame. Yes. Okay. Um, show you what's been marked in this case is exhibit number 141. Is that the broken saw blade uh, that you examined? Uh, yes. And that's sealed, correct? Yes. All right. I'm going to show you what's been marked in this case is exhibit number 226. We don't have to open it, but is this the Bosoft frame labeled item AG that you examined? Yes. Okay. For everyone's benefit, I'm including exhibit number 113, showing the saw blade. It's already been received into evidence. Exhibit 224, showing that bow saw frame found at the Irwin Road property, or excuse me, found at, at Oak Springs. The lab photographed that broken saw blade. Yes. And is this that photo? Yes. The blade was broken uh, at one end. Yes. And is that a close up of the broken end? It is. Now, the bow saw frame, did it have a piece? of metal uh, that appeared to be a broken end of a saw blade? It did. Right. And is that what we're looking at in this slide? Yes. And is that that item perhaps a bit closer up? Yes. Okay. So you then, having all of these items, you perform some analysis on the very tip of the of a blade that was left on that bow saw frame that was at the Haldition house. You look to see if it matched the saw blade that was found out at the, the Irwin Road farm. Um, you look to see if those were a physical fit. Yes. Okay. And what was your analysis? Um, so again, I looked at the items visually. I looked at the broken ends. Then I uh, used a microscope, and I was able to determine that there was a physical fit between uh, the saw blade and the small piece of um, of blade that was removed from the from the uh, saw frame. Okay. And photographs were taken of this. Yes. What are we looking at there? Um, so that's the the um, the small piece on the left hand side is from the frame, and then um, the the end of the blade, and that's the physical fit that that you can uh, that I determined existed between those items. Is that another closer up view, but maybe a different angle of that same thing? Yes. And what are we seeing there that we maybe couldn't see in the prior photograph? Um, so with with um, this item, it appeared that when it broke, it bent before it broke. So this is just a, a, um, a, phys a sort of like a 3D physical fit. There, we're looking at just a different angle of the same fit? Yes. And there as well? Yes. Uh, based on looking at that item, uh, you're comfortable saying, though, that those two items are, in fact, a physical fit? Yes. Okay. No further questions? 
cross-examination? No, thank you. May this witness be excused and released? Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks. If you have any exhibits, go right ahead and have a good rest of your day.